In this video, I'll uncover the top foods that spike your insulin levels. Hi ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Zorowski and welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification, and join our notification community so I can help you excel your health and your life. In this video, we're talking about the top foods that spike your insulin levels, okay? There's a lot of foods that are unknowingly spiking your insulin levels. There's a lot of foods that aren't so obvious, right? There's the real obvious ones out there that you know you got to stay away from. Otherwise, you're going to have issues with weight. You're going to be you know, causing some insulin resistance. But let's talk about some of the not so obvious ones and the top ones that are doing so. So first on our list is going to be sugary drinks. A lot of people actually stop drinking sugary drinks, or so they think so, and they stop drinking all those sodas and they switch to teas. But unfortunately, a lot of the teas out there that people are buying are loaded with just as much sugar as the soda. So though you think you're switching to a healthier option, you're not really getting too much healthier. So we got to be careful with that. The next is sodas itself. Okay. Once again, sodas are terrible for you for a lot of reasons, but one of the major reasons is they're loaded with corn syrup, a very highly processed sugar that is going to just skyrocket your insulin levels. But when we look at these sugary drinks, they're not associated with any type of fiber or anything to slow down or buffer that insulin level or buffer that blood sugar. So, you know, they do really bad things for the blood sugar and along with juices here. Now, when we look at juices, a lot of people are waking up in the morning, they're drinking orange juice, apple juice. So they wake up first thing and they skyrocket that insulin level, skyrocket that blood sugar, and that is going to stop them from achieving their weight loss goals, but also skyrocket that insulin, causing more weight loss resistance. Next here is damaging stress. Okay. Now this one is one of those things, again, that's not so obvious to a lot of people. First of all, when we look at relationships, financial stress, a lot of people have these different stressors in their life. Okay. There's also good stress on the body, like some daily exercise that goes on for a half hour to an hour. You know, those can be good stressors in the life, but stress from relationship, job, work, those types of things, those can be very, very hard on the body. And even excessive exercise can be hard on the body as well. So when we look at excessive exercise, somebody who's maybe try training for a Ironman or some big event like that, and they're running, you know, uh, miles and miles every single day, that can actually be excessive and harm the body. Now I find some people who are unhealthy and they try to do this, they actually even become more unhealthy. So got to be careful with that because you'll raise those cortisol levels. And of course you'll raise insulin with it. Next is grazing. Okay. Recently at the gym, I heard one of the trainers tell one of the um, students they were working with that they needed to start eating six small meals a day. And I thought to myself, man, I feel so bad for this person, but it's not my place to step in. But you know, they're telling them they need to go to the gym more, they need to work out harder, but yet they also need to eat six small meals a day, just spiking their insulin all day long. And so essentially what happens here is it's going to stop the weight loss when you're spiking that insulin. So we got to make sure that we're doing more of a eating strategy like intermittent fasting, one meal a day, those types of strategies will actually help us keep insulin levels low and therefore actually help us achieve our results that we're looking for. Next is sugary foods. Okay. Once again, there's a lot of real obvious ones out there. Not so obvious. People who are trying to eat a healthier diet, they switch to something like yogurt, for instance, and then their yogurt, you know, come to find out has uh, 40 grams of sugar per serving in it. Okay. Watch out for stuff like that. A lot of condiments like uh, mayonnaise, like um, ketchup, for instance, they will have a lot of sugar involved with it as well. So watch out. And then the quote unquote healthy bars. You know, I remember back in the day, a lot of the bars that I would eat would be loaded with sugar. And at the time, I thought they were healthy. Of course, I know now that they're not. And I look back on them thinking, wow, you know, 20 grams of sugar, 15 grams, even 10 grams of sugar in one of these bars, terrible. So we got to watch out for that and make sure that we're really looking at all the labels when we're buying food because a lot of foods have sugar added to it and you are unknowingly buy it. Things like canned tomatoes in many cases has sugar added to it. So you've got to watch out for that. You have to learn to read labels if you want to avoid the sugar and keep your insulin levels balanced and low. Next is refined carbohydrates. This falls into the more obvious part of this, uh, this presentation, but the white pasta, white rice, white breads, bagels, stay away from all that stuff, the cookies and all the different snacks, okay? Make sure the refined carbohydrates just aren't even in your lifestyle if you're concerned about lowering your insulin levels because, you know, as we refine these foods, as we process these foods, they 
just literally raise up the blood sugar much quicker, much faster than good whole foods do. So we want to make sure we're sticking to high quality foods. Uh, too much protein. This is also one that not too many people know about. So if you're over consuming protein, you're going to raise insulin levels. A lot of people switch from an unhealthy diet and they started, you know, wanting to eat healthier. So they started eating a lot more protein while well, they were grabbing bags of jerky. They're grabbing packets of almonds at the cash register. And essentially what they found is that, you know, it raised up their insulin levels and helped and, and kind of blunted the weight loss. So when we look at too much protein, we have to make sure that we're not over consuming the protein. You know, protein, of course, is a good thing, but many people are over consuming it. We want to be careful with that because it will raise up our insulin levels as we're over consuming it. Next is high sugar fruit. This is another big one that is raising up insulin levels, stopping you from achieving your weight loss goals, your health goals, and even causing insulin resistance in people who are very sensitive. Now, when we look at high sugar fruits, we're thinking mangoes, bananas, red apples. We want to start thinking more of the berries. If we want to get into the low glycemic index fruits that aren't going to raise our insulin levels as high. So anyway, high sugar fruits, make sure you stay away from that. Once again, perfectly healthy person that wants to have some variety in their life, you know, and eating some uh, high sugar fruits here and there, enjoying a banana, a mango, isn't going to kill you by any means. But someone who is trying to keep the insulin levels low, somebody who is fighting insulin resistance, we want to make sure that we stay away from this stuff, okay? So here's some of the top foods that are going to cause you to raise your insulin levels in your body. So make sure you're avoiding these. Be sure to share this video with your friends and also give it a big thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. If you have any questions, put it down here in the comment section. And then be sure to subscribe to my channel if you you haven't done so yet. I'd greatly appreciate that. And then also be sure to check out my other videos on how you can improve your health. I'll see you in the next video.